Uh, okay, so since we created the register route and we are expecting to get these properties uh, from the payload, we should uh, validate them, right? So this is why I imported from at happy fold slash joy the string, the object, the date functions, and this is how you install these. So as a dependency, at happy dot joy. So npm install at happy fold slash joy as a div dependencies for installing the types to import it correctly in TypeScript uh, you will install at happy for at types sorry forward slash happy underscore underscore joy okay so in the auth controller just right after you pass the sync handler you need to pass an options which contains uh, validate and by the way, if you passed path to false, uh, this this route won't be uh, required the user to be authenticated, even if you register the authentication to be something by default. Uh, maybe this is a little bit earlier to mention that was just just uh, remember this, remember this, yeah. And now inside the validate object, you can validate a couple of things. So you can validate the headers, the params, the query itself, and in our case, the payload. But as you can see, I'm not going through everything. I'm just showing you uh, things that you will definitely do at some point. So I will validate the payload. Payload. So I'm, I'm expecting a first name for in the payload property. I'm expecting a property called first name in the payload. So this is, should be a string. This is also required. So as you can see, um, I think this is called the fluent API, not sure. But basically each function returns the same object itself. So that's why I can't just put uh, also string again, I think. No, I can't, but I can, <laughs> I can also uh, pass any, uh, call any other function that exists in the Joy uh, library. So I can call require, although I did not uh, import that, but anyway, then max, uh, 250 this is for the characters and then min uh, 3 now uh, the last name will be the same thing and now I will import I will do it for the email so the, more, the email is a string it's also required and min max is the same or min I will be 4 for example and it will be email and now something interesting which is the birth of that so remember this could be null in our case right so one second let me copy this so birth of that will be equal to that this is optional so if this exists validate it if it does if it does not exist don't do anything which is very cool uh, min so when when not 1950 january the first day and the max date Uh, yes, so 210, uh, 2010, sorry, uh, the 1st of January. So I really like uh, how they did this validation because in other libraries or other frameworks, it's really uh, a little bit annoying to do this optional thing. Uh, yeah, it's really annoying. I remember I used the framework, uh, I think it's called Feathers. And I, I had a really bad time doing some of these these kind of things. So if this exists, validate it. If it does not, don't do anything. So it was it, it, it's doable, but it was a little bit annoying. Now the pass uh, word. This is also a string. Required. Man five. Um, max. Fifteen. Also, you can pass the gex. So if you want to force the user to have a password that contains characters, uppercase, lowercase, um, numbers, um, like special characters and stuff like that. But this won't work because you need to pass this to the object. This is the object function. The object function. This is why we imported that. So save this. And now after you pass the payload this is this is the validation rules for the payload let's just test that so everything runs fine let's try to register with invalid data like this 
so we see this uh, bad request with the status 400 this is fine this means our request uh, we sorry this means we sent a bad data which is nice but what we need to do is to show the user or maybe it, it, it really depends on your case some people will just be okay with this but if you want to show the user the errors or maybe show the front end developer the errors and then he or she can just uh, do whatever they want with that so after the payload just pass the fail action function and this is uh, will throw an error and this error comes as the third argument so request and uh, h this is the response toolkit and now the error which is five error uh, if you just throw that the same error you have here you will, will be just retained as to the back end to the front end sorry so let's try this but we are not done yet so there is something also very very i think very important you should know so as you can see now we have the message we have the validation keys so we can know what uh what things that uh, make the validation a break okay so what happened if two things uh, were invalid so for example the email is not valid and the first name so we will only get uh, a response for the first name being being invalid so to fix this we should understand that joy uh, will validate them one by one at the same order but as soon as one of them breaks the validation rules it will just stop and return that error so let's just force it uh, to go go through all of them and just keep building all the error messages and so we get all of them so you pass an options for that so a bot early to throw uh, to force by default it's by default it's true so pass false and now we should see all the error messages uh, we have so we have an error about the first name and the email and this is and all of them inside the first uh, all of them inside uh, the message as you can see but let's just remove the password and send so this is it Maybe you can split the message by the dot and now you will have three messages. But yeah, I think this is the basic idea. Hopefully this was useful. And remember there is a code, there is a repository with this code. You can look at it. So I think now we can uh, start by registering our, our strategies. And just let's talk about that and how we can secure our routes with JWT and also allow the user to log in so now the user can register we can uh, the user can have a valid JWT when they register so I mean we did this already but let me just show you again so password uh, the, yes the first name is not valid and the email is not valid so we already did this we have the access token so how we can use this right how we can decode the access token in our backend to get what you what which user is this one so when you create a post we can link the user with the post okay so these are for the next video thank you